Hey everyone, welcome to episode 21 of the Sam Taylor Podcast. My name is Kay and I'm the producer. Today's conversation is with Gordon Sinclair, who is a manager with PwC Calgary and an accounting graduate from the University of Lethbridge. He's a childhood friend of Sam. They went to school together and he joined her to discuss his big four recruitment process and the resilience that was involved in that journey. And they both share their career choices and why they chose to go the path of a CPA designation and personal growth along with that. They both also shared some stories on why they decided to go to university to begin with and what their mindset is and how they use that to approach their work and their lives today. It's a really great episode. I think if you're approaching the, you know, big four world, public accounting world, or, you know, just graduating, this is a really great episode to listen to on resilience and on mindset and how to make sure that you're, you know, getting a new job uh, in the right frame of mind. Uh, Gordon's info is linked in the description. Feel free to reach out to him at all if you have any questions or would like to just have a conversation with him. He's definitely open to that. And of course, Sam's info is linked down as well. Thanks and enjoy. Gordon Sinclair. I think that in the house. <laughs> so I think that you have got to be one of my oldest, I'm going to friend, even, you know, I feel like we go way, way back that we can use that term, even if in the future, we don't talk to each other for decades. Is that fair? That is 100% fair. It's definitely grade seven is when it all grade began. Grade seven. Yeah. So I was trying to put in context. I'm like, did I know you before Shalane, who was like the first guest of the podcast? Or like, I was like, is it elementary? So it was grade seven. Grade seven, yeah. Uh, we both started at Annie Gale because before that I went to uh, Cecil Swanson for elementary in Rundle. And right, and I was, was like CJM next door. Yeah, yeah. So we could have <laughs> met on the playground, but you know, for sure, grade seven. Grade seven, yeah. wow. And I, I don't do linear. Linear is overdone. We'll hop around a ton. We'll get some points in. Sure. We'll miss some stuff because it's been a long, long flipping time since grade seven. <laughs> um, it really has been. It I really has been. That high. Um, so <laughs> let's skip all the way to the present and then we'll bounce back a ton. Um, Gordon Sinclair, who are you? What are you? Where are you now? Um, and yeah. and yeah, let's start there. Yeah, who am I? I'm a road cycling, anime loving, chilling, movie watching, chilling kind of guy. I love, love this. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to point out, I love that you didn't um, start with your career. I love that. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, you know what? To actually answer that, in, I saw it on uh, Emmanuel Atro, who's a sports product. But he even said this the other day, you need to separate who you are from what you do, because yeah. at a point in life when you no longer do that thing, you don't really know who you are. So I, I would say that, you know, to, to the upcoming kids, people, even at full grown adults, figure out who you are separate from what you do. They're two different. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I didn't awesome. even mean for it to be a, a trick question um, or like not even trick, but just such an eloquently answered uh, question, uh, good setup, because it's so true. And uh, I know I'm guilty of somebody who put a lot of time and effort into her career, um, you know, having to go back and forth and all, constantly readjust. Am I being defined too much by X? Am I being defined too much by this? And knowing like, if I say the answer is yes, cool. What am I going to do about it? So road yeah. cycling, anime yeah. loving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I probably watch more television in Japanese than I do in anything else. It's actually kind of weird. That's do I know I Japanese? Like not at all. Not at all. I did <laughs> I wanted to learn. Uh, I know a few words like baka, which just means idiot. So like, <laughs> <laughs> they just say it so much, but like, you know, it sticks out. But uh, yeah, so. But, it's yeah. okay. Normally people just know the swear words in other languages, whereas I just know how to order beer and say like, cheers, <laughs> cilantro, <laughs> prost, prost. <laughs> I can go on and on. Um, okay, cool. So just, just to bring it home to um, yeah. our, our main audience who will be other recent grads or potential accounting students or uh, current accounting students. Um, what is your day gig and, and partially sometimes night gig? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They they interlap. 
So I am currently a manager in risk assurance at PwC. I do hold my CPA. Um, unlike the broad spectrum of people who go to the firm, I didn't do core assurance or like, you know, external audit as some places call it. I went straight into the risk side of practice and did my CPA there. So a little different, um, but, you know, just other head of the same coin. Yeah, there's so many kind of different paths. And that's one thing that we like to highlight here is there's industry, there's government, there's, um, and then even within the firms, there's, you know, straight assurance, there's some people that are right into tax, and then there's people that go straight into risk advisory. And there's some people who make their way to different um, service lines through other service lines. So did you start yeah. off, um, first of all, because I, I dated you because I said we went to grade seven together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, did you start off at PwC and work your way up through there? Nah, I, I actually started off at Deloitte. So I was there about three and a half years and I was actually let go. Um, and then did industry for about six months, realized it wasn't my bag. Uh, and then came to P-Dub for two years and just actually this year I got promoted. So congratulations. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you. It's been honestly like, man, I got stories for days. Like this roller coaster of a ride is, is insane, I think. And I think it provides a lot of context and comfort to those who weren't the four-star recruits, right? Mm. Um, I, I always think things think back to sports, but um, for me, I wasn't a 4.0 GPA kid. I, I was a 3.0 GPA kid. Um, for me, I worked a lot while going to school. Mm -hmm. And I had some great interviews, you know, when I started the process. So actually, when I started the process, I was actually behind. It was like I was in my diploma state. Um, I went to an event. Everyone had already been hired. But for whatever reason, KPMG really liked me. Uh, notice I said KPMG, but I never actually worked there. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I'm like, I'm wondering where yeah. this is going. So you're, uh, actually, yeah. you're doing recruiting and you got along really great with KPMG. Yeah, I got invited to their office. I did the what they called the inside look. And then their first year of ever doing the executive inside look, I also got invited to, which is where they send you to Toronto and you get to spend a weekend in Toronto and then have dinner with their president, with the Canadian president. So I did, go and ahead. Sorry. And you're in Calgary, right? So this was all yep. done from Calgary and you kind of go through these different levels and get flown out to Toronto where you meet their president. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was, I was like, oh man, this is it. This is for me, you know, I was going for uh, like a co-op position for the summer. I was like, this is, this is life, I got this. And I applied and a partner calls me and tells me I didn't get it. Hmm. Um, and I was like, damn. And it was like, well, my grades just weren't high enough. And I was like, oh, okay. And so. Sorry, that's like, what he that said sucks. on the phone? Yeah, he said, that's what it worked, it came down to be. Right? Hmm. And I was like, okay. And it's weird because, you know, you always feel like partners or whoever have veto rights, but I guess there's always someone in the back that you may have never met, but it has a little more say. And so I was hurt. I was down. I, yeah. I thought this was it, you know? And so then I applied the next year, same thing. Like I didn't apply to any other firm at this point in time. So they told me the same thing. No, sorry, grades aren't there. And I remember walking down the street one day, I was working oil and gas while this happened. And I ran into a partner. I don't want to name names because, like, you know, yeah. you never know how people are going to take things. But I walked into a very senior partner at KPMG. He's like, Gordon. I'm like, hey, X, how's it going? He's like, good. Like, he's like, oh, what firm are you at? I'm like, none. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you are designed for a firm. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, I tried. You guys won't hire me. And he said, well, <laughs> I love that you said that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, cool, but yeah, I'm big trying. And he said to me, you're not selling yourself enough. Mm. And I didn't go into further details because I didn't know how much he knew, but I just took that advice and I said, okay, like I understand, right? And when I tell you, like, I thought I sold myself a lot. If I showed up into the KP office in Calgary, people, like for an event, people thought I was working there already. Like they knew me. So 
you know, we, we keep going and we fast forward and I'm in, I'm in my university now, University of Lethbridge and Deloitte's coming to campus. And my friend, Safa, I don't know if you know Safa, um, you, you might though, cause she did come to Pearson like in grade 11 or 12. And then she's now married to a guy named Gus Mund, who is a year or two younger than us. Safa so sounds all, familiar, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pause yeah. that. I'll look into that after. Ooh. Yeah. So in, so I honestly, I thank her for this. So she tells me to come to Deloitte to the info session. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I got an oil and gas job. I'm, I'm doing fine. She's like, now you got to come, blah, blah. So I go. I meet the recruiter and I straight up just go, hey, I have a 3.0. Is that fine? She's like, yeah. She's like, absolutely. Like, we, you know, it's more than just this, you know, just your grades. It's the full story. And I said, okay. So then I slightly started recruiting. And I'll tell you, I was very cynical and jaded at this point. Yeah, for um, context, I'm just going to interrupt because at that time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but getting a job in oil and gas in Calgary at the time was um, not not easy, not hard, but like they were highly paid and highly sought after. So, for sure. um, to, so to have a good thing and be like, well, why would I put myself through this for more hours for possibly less remuneration? Um, and when I already have been told that I don't meet whatever standard or whatever box is out there. Um, and 100%. so, you know, putting yourself in that position when you've already had evidence that maybe it won't work out, like that's huge. So you're still cautious, exactly. you're dipping your toes in, a partner tells you that's cool. And you're still like, mm, sure. Like, we'll, we'll sure see about, about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll see like, cause you still haven't hired me. So like, is it really <laughs> this thing, right? And so I might get a bit of the order of events a little confusing here, but I think they're important. So I went to a few events. And I remember being there and being, a, I was probably the most firm, deliberate, and probably honestly rude person I've ever been in my life. And I, I say that openly and not to boast, but I just knew that like, if I'm going to go through this, I'm going to tell them what I want. Mm -hmm. And so I remember talking to a gentleman and I was like, oh, he worked in some group. And I was like, oh, do you do mergers and acquisitions? Because that was something I was really interested in. He says, no, talk to her over there, Jacqueline. And I said, okay. So I went over to Jacqueline. And I'm like, hey, Jacqueline, I'm Gordon. I hear you do mergers and acquisitions. She's like, no, I don't. Now, I don't remember this, but according to Jacqueline, she said, I said, thanks, and just walked off. Like, I didn't, <laughs> didn't care who she was, didn't talk to her whatsoever. Okay? So that's, like, for me, that was, like, kind of like a strike one. And I'll tell you, it all comes together wise. So remember the name Jacqueline. They wrote her name loosely because... She knows and she's awesome. She's an amazing person. Um, so then deadline comes in for early, for early resumes because there are certain people they want early resumes for. I didn't submit one. Um, and part of it was I was traveling. Part of it was I just was like, you know what? Like I just, yep. I emotionally couldn't go through that break again. Mm -hmm. the, the recruiter person hits me up and says, Gordon, I didn't see it. And I was like, sorry, like, I'm, I'm traveling, blah, blah. She's like, can you get it to me by tomorrow? And I was like, okay, I will. So I send it in. So again, like, I'm like, man, okay, you're looking for me, but I've been through this. I've been courted before, right? Yeah. So I send it in. I get selected for an early interview. Okay. I show up in the interview. Who's interviewing me? Jacqueline. <laughs> <laughs> and she wholeheartedly remembers me, and I have no clue who she is. Okay, I, I, I don't know, it's my interview, so going through the interview and the conversation about my grades kind of come up, and I say, look, I'm a dedicated human. Right now, I'm working full-time, going to school at night, three classes a week, plus running nightclub security. Yeah. It's not that I'm not, you know, that I can't handle it, it's just I'm spreading myself thin. And then I told them, like, I believe in dedication so much, I have it tattooed on my arm, which I actually do. 
So again, four things for me. I was like, oh, Gordon, you just told them you have a tattoo. Like, great. Like, I was like, walk it. I remember. It's on your arm. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Like, it's on the arm. It's not like, you know, on my face or neck or anything like that. Um, you know. And so I remember leaving that interview, telling my mom, yeah, no, nah, that's not going down. Didn't happen. Going, I'm going back to work. And then a week later, I get called and Jacqueline, she's offering me a job. Mm. All right. And I was like, what? Are you believing it at like, this point? Are you like, <laughs> I'm in shock. I didn't, she's like, I, and so I'll be whole, whole hired with you. She's like, so one in my interview, Jacqueline was from Risk and the other person was from Core Audit. And he was a partner. And I guess he also really wanted to hire me, but like she got, I don't know if there's a coin toss or whatever, but she got to offer me the job first. And I was just so stunned that I said, yes. And I'll tell you wholeheartedly, I had no clue what her team really did. I didn't fully understand. I even looked on the website. I didn't really understand it. But what I knew was I was getting into a big four, which is what I always wanted. My mom's an accountant. It's a dream she always had. She never got to do because she had me. Right. So I was like, you know, I get to live up to that for her, for myself. And I'm doing it. And I get to get my CPA. I'm doing it. It's happening. Right. And so that's it. That's the end. And so I started working for Jacqueline. And one of the things she had told me that she valued was that I wasn't like everyone else. I wasn't just a 4.0 kid who that's all I did. I didn't have any extracurriculars. I didn't experience life. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't. She really appreciated that. Like, you know, I was a little more well-rounded. Yeah. Right. In life. And so that's kind of like the cold notes, which of a long story oh my still gosh. Long, of, my, of my experience of just getting my foot in the door to start. I, I just want to unpack that just a bit and provide um, like, just wow, how powerful that is because the fortitude that it takes, you know, to be told no after being told yes and to have all these indications, um, you know, it, it's, interesting because I do have evidence to believe one of my former candidates who was on the podcast recently uh, is now at KPMG in Calgary um, in their talent acquisition department. So it was a number of years ago. I have reason to believe that lots of things have changed. Similar, I went through the big four recruiting process in Calgary um, a number of years ago, and there's, you know, very similar events. So I just want to play devil's advocate a bit before yeah, yeah. talking about um, every company, every, like I think of companies as being made up of their individuals and yes, there's a tone and it permeates, but cultures can shift and change for better and, and for otherwise. So, yeah. you know, um, I don't, it doesn't sound like you hold any kind of resentment or ill will, um, but it is a part of your oh. story. It is a part yeah, of your yeah. story, like, a big part. hundred percent. And honestly, like if you're recruiting the KP, go for it. Like, honestly, go for it. they they're a great firm. They're great people. Like, honestly, a lot of the people I met, there were awesome. The culture that I met during that was great. So I hold no ill will. It was just, for whatever reason, what they were looking for, That's I had a lot in one aspect, but not in the other. And for them, there were other people that beat me out in both parties. So it is what it is, right? Like, and it's, and that's yeah. just what it is, you know? Hey, Gordon, I have a, so many parallels, and this isn't a podcast about me, so I won't get into any specific details, but oh, I will good. tell you that throughout my career, except for Dell, um, I have been every, and maybe even Dell, who knows, right? They don't tell you if you were a second choice and got in through, a, you know, another <laughs> one. Um, but yeah. I have been people's, like, you know, runner up. I have been people's, you know, where they call back a few months later, I've been flat out denied for things and come back and re reapplied or requalified or snuck in a side door and then fucking killed it because there's nothing like being told yeah. no to be like, all right. Um, once you have that time to reset. So you start at Deloitte and at, now when you start, do you feel, do you feel pretty good about yourself? Do you feel unsure? Like how much of the, I'm going to say just damage and like, you know, trauma from yeah. what you went through, how much of that is still in the back of your mind? Um, and saying like, do you feel like you belong there? Do you feel like you have a spot with, within that team that you were in that, or was there still some yeah. lingering doubt? There was no doubt. Once I got there being let go from Deloitte, I struggled with a lot of doubt and, and still do. Right. Mm. And that was March, 2018. But when I got to Deloitte, 
right? And, you know, Sappa was there, which was awesome. And so was a few other people. Uh, I was like, yo, this is it. This is awesome. I, I do belong here. And I started doing recruiting, right? For twofold, threefold probably. One, because I knew my story would resonate with a lot of people. Two, because I wanted to ensure that KP saw me at these events and know what they lost out. And three, that I could take that I would find the kids that were like me that no one else wanted to listen to and be like, no, man, give this person a shot. Let's see what's yeah. up with them. Let's talk to them really and find out what's up. And because I truly believe there's so many kids out there who, you know, mine, I worked a lot. Maybe sometimes, maybe you've got three, four siblings and you got to go home after class and babysit. Maybe yeah. you got to help out at the family restaurant, right? Maybe you have an abusive family at home or maybe whatever, you know? Yeah. And I think we, we get so lost into the, to the, the numbers of it that we don't actually get to see like, what is this person? Like how committed are they? How dedicated are they? Are they done at three or are they the person that's gonna stay till seven just so they can get it, right? And help everyone else out. So yep. um, yeah. I agree. So not only, that. not only did you show up, but you showed up and paved the way for others to come, which is um, admirable. Right. Like just, it's Thank you. we always want to make it a little bit better for those who come after us right it's uh yep and absolutely uh, like we both grew up in the same neighborhood and went to the same high schools and you know there wasn't a large graduating rate uh, or people yeah. that went on to you know university or college or um and so <laughs> like I know I struggled with some feelings of like, should I be here or what about this? And I didn't have a 4.0 either. Um, I played sports. Um, I was fortunate. I, I worked, but I didn't have to, you know, put up with the hours that you worked with. But I know that when I started, I remember this student, yeah. um, my colleague, uh, who asked me like, seriously, he had a stack of papers and he was in, like a first year like me. And he was like, who does our photocopying? <laughs> And it was that moment where I was like, game on. Sorry. Like, yeah. you, like the balance of power just like tipped because I, I knew <laughs> there's something about grit. There's something about knowing like when you go to school, go to work, train, like have all these things and that you are not going to be bothered if you have to do your own photocopying. Photocopying, you right? bothered if you it's have like, to bro, like- You just put a page in and like, you know, it's like, I got my <laughs> headphones, it takes me to like, bro, like, yeah, it's like, Sorry, yeah, it's almost like you're like, you know what, you've been coddled too much. You're not prepared for this grind. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I will say too, like um, of our Dow students, a lot of people here are really fortunate um, and they recognize it. And there's almost a, a disfortune in being fortunate as well. And they recognize it. So I've heard from a few of my students afterwards is like, shoot, like you hold me to the same standard as everybody else and you don't it's not that you don't care, like you'll listen, but you don't change policies because of X and Y, or you don't do this because of this and that. Oh. Um, the same for everybody, regardless of what you kind of have going on, but you'll be there for me, but you let me, <laughs> you let me fail and you won't just let oh, yeah. me like ship it to yep. the, you know, to, oh, I'll, you can just transfer that way to the final. It's like, no, this is your grade. You live with it. You went out and party. Cool. Live with it. You went out and worked. Sorry, like live with it. Cause we all, okay. You know, we have, con we have actions and we have consequences. The one thing is, is just putting able to provide that context, you know, why, you know, I remember the recruiter or when I got hired into uh, one of the internships, they looked at my transcript and they said C plus in computer science. And I was like, yes. And they were making fun of me. Like it ended up being like this really like funny thing. And I was like, yeah, don't yeah. ask me to fix stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that. Like, uh, it's not I'll good. tell you about your financial statements, but anything else, you just leave it alone, right? <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, but it's, it's, I'm like, it, I can, I'm like, I can add and subtract in binary. Um, but you asked me what the on switch is from the reset and I was lost. <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> okay. So you're, yeah. you're trucking along and you're at Deloitte. Um, I just yeah. want to point out, we have had, like Calgary is a place of over a million people and we have had the most random run-ups because this is a time I feel yeah. like you had kind of um, a ghost Facebook account and that's all I kind of had was Facebook. Yeah. And then <laughs> I was always in and out and like not there, there. You were, I guess, never there. And so in Calgary, just in reflecting on this, 
coming to this interview. I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, when have Gordon and I run into each other? And I'm going to miss some. But I do recall one day randomly either day drinking or night drinking at Flame Central and running into you. Was, was that when yeah. you were head of security? That would be when I was head of security, yeah. <laughs> this is my best fight at Flame Central. And I, <laughs> so that was, that was nice, random, and, and yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the, one of the next ones would have been in the basement of state during Comic-Con when we were, you were attending a workshop and I was teaching the workshop next, next side by side. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. We were in the windowless basement where there's Comic-Con above us and trying to get through like one of the workshops that was not, not the most, like, was it tax? I don't really know. It might've been tax. I think it was actually tax. Yeah. yeah. Windowless basement yeah. and say, oh, with no cell coverage. No cell coverage. Yeah. 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 You're, just, you're just there. Like, this is great. This is the best place ever. Yeah. <laughs> nice and random. And then... Yeah. We were, we ran into each other in the airport. It was like a Thursday or a Tuesday morning, like really early morning. And um, you were in the fancy line um, for going through security. And I was in the everybody line. And we talked until they were like, sir, sir, your fancy line is ready. And then you waited for me and we talked a little bit. And then you proceeded to go to more fancy lines. And I went to Tim Hortons. <laughs> Yeah, those my travel days, the pre-COVID travel days for work. Yeah. Pre-COVID travel days. So one thing yeah. I wanted to just highlight in this is that there was a lot of life that happened, you know, between these yeah. moments. But I I like to think that we stay the same people. 100%. 100%. One thing I didn't get to mention, which I, I was saving for this, was a time where you inspired me to actually seek out a firm. And it wasn't in one of the times you mentioned us meeting up. We were, I was walking downtown um, by like 10th and 11th and there was the Safeway there. And I just happened to run into you in that parking lot. I think I was like, I might've been working at ATV at the time. And you were at, I'm pretty sure it's P-Dub and manager P-Dub. And I was just like, damn, Sarah. I was like, damn. Like, I was like, I was so, there was so much pride because like, you know, we came from the same area, right? Like. I always thought you were a brilliant woman and I'm like, I'm seeing you live a life that like I wanted to get to. And I just remember kind of like, you know, coyly picking your brain on it a little bit. Right. And it was like, just hearing you be there. I know you were there. I was like, I know I can do this too. And I know this is where I want to be. And I know. Right. And so like, you definitely, you like that conversation, like, it might've only lasted five, 10 minutes, but really was like another point, like a feather in the cap of, I got to seek this. I got to seek this out. Sam knows something that I, that I, you know, heard about, but I never, before you, I never really met anyone who worked at the firm. But those 10 minutes that we had that, you know, just that little walk, I was like, she knows. And I, and I trust what she's doing. And so that's where it came through. So I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. It is, it's a weird one. Um, it's a weird one because I know we're, we're told many narratives as a society and also as, you know, just we're told a lot of narratives. And the narrative um, that I was told uh, from my family is go to university and it will be okay. That was, that was basically it. Um, nobody in my family had gone and graduated from university, my like immediate family. And yet sitting on the sea train with my Oma, my mom's mom who lived with us for a number of years, she pointed to the UFC and said, one day you'll go there. And so all of these plans have been kind of made and they were like, go to university. It'll be like, basically it'll be okay. Um, and first of all, like that's powerful to have like some sort of narrative and just like feel like there's a path. But the one thing is, is when I went there, um, trying to navigate what to do and what was next or what is there out there when I didn't, I was already kind of um, in a place where I didn't necessarily always feel like I belonged or always knew what was next or where to go. And um, so I really, I wish I could say it was on purpose. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we have this podcast is because selfishly, yeah. I would have loved to have listened in on two people 12 years of um, for where perhaps I was, uh, we were, and just say like, 
hey, what was going through your mind? And then also knowing that sometimes it makes more sense looking backwards than forwards. So being in university, um, being competitive and being like, someone's like, oh, you're going to a recruiting event. I'm like, what's a recruiting event? You know, I find myself in accounting and then they're like, it's a place with free food and you get jobs. And I was like, I like free food and jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I want money and free food. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And then there, and then somebody was like, it's very competitive. You probably won't get a job. And I was like, it's on. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. How many yeah. jobs do you want me to get? Yeah, well, yeah, I'll get them all. <laughs> um, and then just re and then, but going through kind of like an emotional, like, I think I can do this but I don't know. I think I can try, but I don't know. Um, and so just telling people like, we're people, we're people, people. Like if you want to do something, you can go do it. There's a front door, there's the back door, there's a side door, make a goal, figure out how to get there. You might find a different goal along the way and it's all okay. It all works out and linear is boring and overdone, but like your story is your story and you can own it. Yeah. Um, I, I was interviewing once and I didn't have a lot of other prospects. And I remember them saying, when I play competitive rugby, they're like, well, you can't like, you can't go practice at six or seven o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, in the summer? They're like, no. They're like, how do you feel about that? And I was like, and I'm like, feel about what? And they're like, about quitting rugby. And I was like, well, I'm not going to quit rugby. So how would you feel about that? <laughs> 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 and, then yeah. I, and then I talked that over with people afterwards and realized that's not a successful like interview strategy. <laughs> <But> <laughs> But at the same time, I, I kind of got by being honest and kind of who you are, like owning who you are, which is a big part of your story, right? One of the reasons why yeah. we can run into each other and have meaningful conversations for five or 10 minutes is, um, you know, with years in between is because there's no bullshit and there's no pretending. And like, we are who we are and we don't need to scream it from the rooftops a lot of the times, but like, you know, it's, we don't have to worry about what, what face do I put on or who am I with when I run into you? Like what version do I have to bring? Like, it's just, it's just me. It's just you. Um, yeah. And so learning, okay, wait a minute. What does firm life entail? And then doing more research and being like, oh, okay. The, this is like what the hours are. This is what the quote investment or sacrifice would be. And here's what some potential upsides are. And so being able yeah. to weigh that, I ended up quitting rugby um, partially to commit myself to the firm um and but that was a choice that I made right and hopefully nowadays it's not a choice that people all like hopefully it's become a little bit better they're a little bit more flexible they're they're aware that people that have jobs that don't have perfect GPAs that have sports that have like this all enriches us and I think like that's come a long long way um and I just want to say like thank you because there's a lot of people that I have gained um little bouts of confidence that, Hey, if they can do that, maybe I can, or, you know, maybe I can reach out and get a coffee or maybe, you know, if I run into somebody, like have a conversation. Um, and I, yeah, I just, yeah, that, that is yeah. so incredibly powerful. And you have given it back three and five and tenfold. And it was so neat to realize that we had a common um, person in common, um, Gita. Yeah. 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 Gita. yeah. So yeah. How do you she worked with me at, um, when I was in oil and gas after I left the firm. Um, and then she okay. went on and uh, pursued her CPA. So she was there when she was a student in school. And um, nice. yeah. And so it is a small, small world in accounting. Um, so yeah, it's, I look at the CPA and let me know if you look the same, if you look at it the same, but I've used the term choose your own adventure because it's one designation. And if you choose to, you can open many doors with it. I would 100% agree. Um, gone are the days where your accountant just does taxes and financial reporting. It is not remotely the case at all anymore. It really is choose your adventure, right? It gives you a solid foundation and lets others know that you have a you know, skill set and an adaptability to do things and an aptitude to do things that are a little different, right? And so, yeah, it's a great way. Like if you're a person who likes business, I get, yeah, this is what I say. If you're a person who likes or loves business, but is unsure of what area of business you want to go towards, a CPA is a great way to do that. Um, because, it, you know, it, it really does allow you to have a foundational understanding of business. Right, that you can take and apply into other aspects within it. 
Totally. Totally. Um, oftentimes we'll see people in business and they'll, they're great. They're dynamic. They know what's going on, but if you put a number in front of them and ask them to present on it or talk about it, they're like, Oh, I don't do numbers. And being a CPA yeah. gives you the confidence to see a number where, you know, maybe you don't know what it means, but you can ask the questions to find out. And then you can, you know, communicate what that, the significance of those numbers are to other people. You can also look at things without numbers and put them yep. into context of number terms or not, or talk about the qualitative. Like it's, it's a robust skill set, but it, it, by just getting your CPA, you, you have to have that well-rounded foundation that you're able to, you know, take to the next step, take whether that means more education or whether that means, you know, whatever. It, it's just, that's a tool yeah. that you have and a foundation. So I like it. No. Okay. So we're at Deloitte and yeah. I'm the year, like, we don't have to, and I, you know, get too, too much into it, but did you leave um, before or after you got your CPA there? Uh, after. So I got my CPA there. Um, you know, I still don't really know what happened with me in there. I, you know, I heard rumors of a utilization thing. I do know there was an engagement that went south and heads had to roll and I was one of the heads that had to roll and so be it. Um, I, there was a long time where I held a disdain in my mouth for Deloitte. And that'd be, that'd be me just being fully transparent. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No worries. Um, but I also realized that, you know, when you hold a hot rock to throw at somebody, you only burn yourself. So I worked very aggressively at letting that go. The one thing that I still struggle with, though, is the confidence that, you know, it took from me. And it's just like anything, you know, when you, if you don't make a sports team, uh, you know, your significant other leaves you. You know, let go from your job, whatever, any adverse thing that happens directly to you, right? You, it, it, it you know, kind of hits you. And so coming to PwC was another way for me to also, not only because I realized that I, I gravitate and belong towards the firm, but it was also another way for me to prove to myself again that I still belong, you know, in this pond, yeah. you know? And then but even, you know, my director and my partner have noticed at times that like, Gordon, you just need to bring that confidence. You are right. You know the answer, you know? And so they even know, and like, I have open conversations about it, right? That it's, um, and I'm hoping that this year is a little different because now that, you know, I got promoted. So not only did I get here, but also getting promoted shows like, Gordon, you, you, you are, you do belong here because you don't just get promoted just for the sake of getting promoted, right? You have to be playing you have to be playing ball at the level. So um, I'm really hoping, you know, that this year, like it's a new promotion. So it just started the summer, but so far I am feeling better and more, you know, less down on myself about what had happened a couple years back. So I'm going to explain and tell a story, but I'm going to circle back to why this relates to you. Um, somebody I know when we were going through the legacy version of CPAs, the CA, and we were going through mod six, which is equal to like capstone two. And at the time they failed about three to 5% of the people in mod six and held them back from writing the UV or CV. And one of my friends failed. And she was like, do I even appeal? And I was like, yes, you appeal because you don't want to not know. Like you'd rather know that you've done everything that you can. And yes, we can't afford it, but like you appeal. And so she appealed and two weeks later, so two weeks into like a very limited window of studying, she found out she passed. And so her confidence took like a roller coaster. Um, but you'd think that when she was told she passed, that that would have restored the roller coaster, right? Yeah. But it doesn't work like that. It's not like, oh, you get back to where, you know, you thought you should have been or where you were and you feel better. Um, and she was like, you know, I just don't like, it's been two weeks. Like, I don't know if I can. And I was like, yeah, but you've been like, you know, looking at the stuff you've been, you've taken the break. And she's just like, I just don't know if I can like go through that again. And I'm going to say to you what I said to her. And because we, I have these moments too, and you know, we'll get, we might get into that one day and we might get into it in part two. Um, but you have to be so much better 
when you restart in order to get there than where you were before that happened. For example, they don't turn over appeals. You have to be a clear pass, a clear mess up in order for them to turn it over. There was one, maybe two people every other year that get like turned over. So if she wasn't even a borderline pass, they would have held the appeal or pardon me, they would have upheld the fail and held her back. Yeah. I was like, dude, you are over two weeks ahead of where everybody else is. And you were going to write and you were going to prove to yourself and to everybody else that you deserve to be there. And this is use it as fuel. And yes, feel, feel those feelings. But not only are you equal, you are above by very proxy that you are here. That is the evidence. So the evidence yeah. that you re like went out recruited um were you know had a job in between you're like you know this is me i'm gonna get stuff done and i'm gonna not let go um it's hasn't been linear linear is overdone i didn't even know (laughs) when we got into this that that would be more true than it is um and then to regain at the firm and not so right there that's already coming out ahead right because you couldn't get the firm as an experienced associate um if you were not meant to be there right? There's no, there's no, you know, oh, you know, we like you, but you know, you're, you know, the work product, like, no, the whole package has to be there. And then to get flip and promoted to lead teams, to lead um, advisory teams, to have that, you know, so I get it. Um, I get it. Um, One of the reasons why, you know, I talk to people and I have these conversations and I don't do really good with surface level bullshit is because, I, sometimes I need to hear that too, right? We all have those moments and those people in our corner to be like, no, wait a minute. Um, nobody gets through this thing clean. Nobody gets through it no. easy. And if, and would you really want it? If it was easy, would you want it? If you did, 100%, no. Yeah. And you, you gotta ask yourself, why did I get through so clean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you really, like, it's hard to get through a real stick, something that should have been sticky and you, you got nothing on you, you're like, did I do it right? <laughs> Is somebody in the background pulling strings for me? Yeah. Did I earn this? Yeah. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I can say like, I earned this. It was me that did it, right? And don't get me wrong. If someone wants to open a door for me, of course I'm yeah. gonna say thank you and walk through, yeah. right? But every day I'd work so much harder to show that like, yeah, the door is open for me, but this is why I belong in it. This is why they opened it for me, right? And so, yeah, I want to agree with you on that. Man. So your LinkedIn picture. Yeah. Is it? I think it's my mom and I. It's your mom and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty special because now um, I was going to ask you um, what's the significance behind it, but I'm, I'm thinking I can guess, but I still want to hear you say it. Yeah. First of all, um, do you remember where it was taken? So this one, so I've had two of my mom and I. The first one was my University of Lethbridge graduation when I graduated university. And I believe the one that's currently up is her and I at my CPA at Convocation. Um, so education has always been big in my family. Um, my mom, so I, I say my mom was a teacher back in the Caribbean when she came here. She actually, she's a bookkeeper because she doesn't have a designation, um, but she'll whip circles around me in accounting. Like, you know, that experience is nice. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, have, you know, it's always just been my mom and I, always, you know? Um, and so I always say, I wouldn't be the man I am without her being the woman that she is. And so, for me, it's always just like, take her on that ride. You know, let's go. Like, I got a Christmas party, you want to roll? You know, like I, you know, this, 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 you know, it's like, give her flowers while she's doing like, you earn this too, mom. Like, you know, you owe me study. You know, you gave me some school fees every now and again. Like, you know, you pushed me and motivated me to this. And so, yeah, it's always, always recognizing that. Amazing. I'm yeah. a mama's boy. I ain't gonna lie. Everybody, I'm a mama's boy. Twenty. Oh no, I, uh, I love it, and I love that. Like we didn't wait till we hit a certain age before we appreciated our parents, right? Like, like my dad did yeah. a lot of my. My dad found out I was interviewing, and he did firm research before I did. And straight up in an interview, they're like, "Where did you find this?" And I'm like, "Well, honestly, I told my dad that I was interviewing." <laughs> 
<laughs> a bunch of research and sent it to me. And they're like, oh, is your dad like a partner? And I'm like, no, like my dad, um, I, he was either working or just recently retired from being an automotive manager, right? He's just really excited <laughs> for me to be ha- here and having this opportunity um, to, right. to interview. So no, having, <laughs> having, that, awesome. having that support from our loved ones, right? Like the bumps, they're there for us. Yeah, they are, hundred percent. It's it's key. I you know, and that's something I you know I'd also tell you the students mm. is like, whenever you're going through university, you're going to be the CPA, whatever, whatever. You know, it's tough. Keep good people around you and those that love you around you. You're not gonna have a lot of time. Some will understand, some won't. But make sure that they understand and and give them some time. Take yourself some breaks. Right, you deserve it. You've earned it, and trust me, like it's as big as this is. Life is even bigger. Absolutely, and bring them along for the ride. Bring them to the Christmas party. Yeah, like exactly, um, let them have some fun. They're fun. It's just all booze, free food, free booze. <laughs> totally. Great. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, yeah. and also one of the best things about having people around you that care about you. Accounting, yes, but also external to accounting is they don't let us talk too, too much about our current, like our work or our, um, or our studies or a bad exam because they just, it's like, they, like the eyes, like, like they're just like, I don't, yeah. I don't like, that's boring to me. Whereas like, yeah, it's like I don't compute. <laughs> right? like, they're just like, or like, what's the big deal? It didn't foot. What is a foot? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what, but super helpful is like you get around in a circle or even just one or other like accountants and I remember we my friend my study buddy and I used to have a no talking accounting rule that would last 30 seconds right because <laughs> yeah. we're better now but like <laughs> in intense times you know we talk about controls right you know better than I do and sometimes it's like wait a minute if I go to a situation where there's no CPAs or CPA candidates um the chances of me talking and dwelling about this are almost zero so I can yeah. avoid this risk all together and all rest together. And, and recover <laughs> and go have some fun. And the studying isn't going anywhere. And more is not more. And your brain needs that, like, that, your brain needs that release. It needs that rest. It needs that. 100%. Hey, when's 100%. the last time you worked security? I'm so interested. Honestly, it was probably Stampede 2019. I just did one night. So there's a charity event. Um, that I help out with and so yeah I just do one night was the last time officially and then 2018 before I went to Asia I did a couple guest shifts just to get some extra spending yeah. money because I just wanted more cash and they needed some help so totally yeah. I love it was yeah. it was it like going back to like an old not not the person but like the situation like an old yeah. friend like did it feel familiar or did it feel foreign or a little bit of both bit of both. I realized how bored I was. So like when I was in, like, cause when I was in, in university and I was in charge, I was running around. I led the team. I had like 30 people that reported to me. I had the manager to deal with, the AGLC, fire, police, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going there to help. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, first off, I have my designation. Like I can't get into anything serious. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not jeopardizing that. Because totally. somebody's mad at somebody for stepping on their shoes. So that was yeah. one. And then two, I'm just like, when you're, you know, posted in a spot, you're like, time really moves slowly. Like, I was <laughs> like, man, it's only 1130. Like, oh my gosh, the struggle. So it was cool to just to be back in it and see that, like, you know, people still drink, people still party, do all that. So that was kind of cool. Totally. Um, yeah. I really like that you had zero ego to go back and do that because where I I had one consulting job where the files were for, um, they were in boxes and the boxes were in a room and I don't know, something was in there. And I remember them saying, oh, do you want us to like hire somebody or I don't know, they were apologetic or something about me going through boxes to go get like materials. And it was slightly different because I had like, I'd left the firm, not just the, like recently, but it was a few years removed. So like similar. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh no, I'll, I'll go get the materials. Like I'll go do this. And I spent a day and they're like, oh, if you don't mind. 
And all I could think about is like, you're paying me like what to go do what? And I was like, I have to like strapped in the, like I was in the jeans and I was like, yeah, I'm, like holding yeah. all these boxes and like doing it through. I was like ridiculously happy because you know, I, I knew this wasn't all the time I knew. And yeah, some of it was boring. Like the novelty was like, you know, at the beginning and then yeah. I'm like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like how many hours can I do this? But I was like, oh, well, whatever. But there's, there was never a point where I was just like, oh, this isn't work for me or, oh, this wasn't that. And to this day, like yeah. I, you know, I have staff, I work for people. I, you know, build teams. Um, you know, I teach and there's, if, if, nobody should ever feel like they're too good or that they've earned not doing something because you yeah. really shouldn't get somebody else to do something if you're not willing to do it. Like that's, that's 100%. a jerk move. 100%, 100%. There should be no task above you doing it, man. Like if you, know, if you can't, if you can't, like if you're not going to do it, don't ask somebody else to do it. And yeah. that, and honestly, and if, and if you do, be prepared to know that you're not a good leader. That's yeah. really it, right? Like, yeah. Cause we're, and which is a big thing as you move up in your career, right? Where we start to understand how important leadership really is to the game and how it is and how much it actually affects, you know, if you're happy or not where you work and what you do, like, and, he, and how you enjoy it. And it completely can flip an experience, just the, the type of leader that you work for, right? Yeah. And if you make a mistake, own it. Or if you, you know, and, and oh, yeah. hopefully people will understand if they don't, well, you'll, you'll bring that into the next one. And, you know, it's, it's, you play the long game in the sense that, you know, we are not our jobs. We are not one single event. We are not one single thing. And it's a process. It's a journey. And I don't want to, I don't want to reach the end, right? I want it to continue being <laughs> a journey and I want to continue growing. And so exactly you know, while we're the same people that we were in junior high, um, I think values wise into the core, there's been a lot of growth in very different ways that makes it exciting. Yes. 100%. 100%. Oh my gosh. Um, I am just going to take a peek here. I feel like we covered like a lot and our like um, Dallas students, let me know, send me an email, like, let me know if, uh, if, and what resonated. Um, I want to turn it and make it a little bit lighter, uh, or maybe it won't be light depending yeah. on the answer. Uh, <laughs> do you do you listen to any podcasts or read any books or audiobooks? I'm not gonna lie. So I played poker yeah. um, a bunch during um, when I was articling early days, and I listened yeah. to a bunch of poker podcasts uh, <laughs> because okay. it was yeah. something that I could kind of Bart Hansen, um, you know, had a bunch. I, basically, anything that had over a hundred hundred hours of something where I could like plug in for like that month or that week sometimes and like get my yeah. audit on will I had something that was nice um so it can be fun it can be business oriented just whatever do you right. are you a podcast listener sometimes um so I listen to Jalen and Jacoby which is a sports podcast um there's another one that I listen to that I really like called Ear Hustle hmm this dude who's in jail in Cali and there's a, he's a producer and they just talk and interview some people in prison and talk about the life in, in jail not from like a you know like throwback show Oz creepy mm -hmm. grimy way but just like what is it like when you're married and you know you haven't seen your wife for 10 years and you're now about to have your first like conjugal visit yeah. and the guy talking about it's almost like you're kissing for the first time. You're nervous. You're scared. Like that, it gets real deep into that kind wow. of stuff, right? Or how they send notes or a guy having seen his brother and now they're both in prison. Or, you know, do you sit, if you're black, do you go with the black guys? Do you go with the white guys? Is there mixed groups? Is there gangs? Like, you know, it's just that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's a really interesting, just like, you know, there's one where it talks about to a dude on death row and what that's like. Like, it's just, yeah. It's, so it's an interesting podcast. I really like that um so those are probably the only podcast i really listened to during covid i actually started uh a men's only book club and that's awesome now thank you i i, I picked these men's only because women always seem to have book book groups and i know a lot of my boys who like just don't read and need to read more and so um we so we started that in february can, can, i'm just gonna interrupt uh, 
Yeah. I had I had like a one book book club with a friend uh, in another country, and he was like, "What you want to like? Do you want to?" I was like, "Yeah, like let's read a book together." He's like, "Like a book club?" I was like, "Yeah, like a book club." <laughs> 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 and that was during COVID, and it was a really long book, <laughs> but like I like it. It was a nice way. So I and I like sure. that you know you put some constraints on it, like men's only, and you had a reason behind it. So how many? Yeah. I want to dig in. How many people and like share what you read? So the, yeah, yeah, there's about eight of us um so far we've read some heavier books so we read the nation must awake which is my witness to the tulsa race massacre 1921 mm -hmm. really it's a man, heavy book but a really good book in the context of it like it's it's basically 50 or so stories of people recounting that night of what happened at tulsa uh, some crazy stories that you're just like whoa um then we read broken glass which is originally a book written in French. And it's uh, about from an African writer. It's based in the Congo. Um, it's kind of like a comedy. Another one we read was pretty heavy was Culture Warlords, uh, My Journey into the Dark Web of White Supremacy. That was another heavy one. She's a Jewish woman, um, well-educated. Like I think she was a Harvard Jewish woman who basically becomes a, uh, creates a, a fake person online or people online to infiltrate all of these like white supremacist type websites and get like to talk to them and stuff like that. Um, we also read The Spook Who Sat by the Door, which is a 1950s, 1960s book that the CIA used to make all their new recruits read. Um, it's about, the, it's, it's a fictional story, but this guy, black guy who joins the CIA and then leaves and teaches all the gangs in Chicago, all the <laughs> tactics and everything he learned from them. So that was another one that we read. That was pretty good. So yeah, that's all we read so far. Oh, and we also read Red Notice, which is a really good book. It's a true story um, from Bill Browder. And so, but he's an American who starts his own hedge fund, a billion dollar hedge fund in Russia. And how and in it there is there's murder there's corruption there's fraud there's um bill Obama, like our barack obama's in it in a little bit because there's actually the mcminsky act that got signed in the united states is about his lawyer um yeah it's just you just read this book you're like what the heck Ooh. i'm reading it and like it sounds like something from like 70 80 90 years ago and you're like no this is like 1980s to early 2000s so let me just say that is an impressive, um, on so many levels, um, kind of COVID, what do you say? I talked to in the last podcast, like a COVID accomplishment or like when people are like, what did you do? Like that, like there was, there were a lot of books and the purpose behind it, you know, getting people uh, together to hang out and, you know, discuss. And like you said, um, you know, maybe there wasn't a lot of like reading to be done. I could definitely have, you know, used a reason and a purpose to kind of communicate with those um, around me a little bit more or a little bit deeper level or have that through line so like kudos yeah. i am so impressed <laughs> thank you, thank you, and i have all you. these good book suggestions to read <laughs> this is awesome oh yeah man i got time if you need more just hit me up i always got a book or two in my mouth absolutely thank you wow um so i know it's too early possibly to say um you're at the firm in your new role likely going to put your significant career focus and effort on this role and you know cognizant that you know the powers that be may be listening to this if they make it this long um but yeah. <laughs> what future options are you considering and it can be you know the future is the future it can be you know a longer time frame it can be a shorter time frame it can be more solid or less yeah. less concrete like what with your cpa and where you are right now given your interests you know, yeah. what future plans are you considering? Yeah, I think for me, it is, you know, my, my plan is always like, you know, before I wanted to be a partner at a firm. Now, I think I do, but I'm not uh, as, as confident. What I do know is I will be at the firm until I believe I've gotten everything that I can out of the firm. Um, the other content and that may not ever happen right i may still and that's part of the cool thing about growing with the firm is that you grow so much in different roles that it just might be that this is where my career is forever and i'm totally cool with that 
the one thing I do want uh, from the firm is to do us a comment in another country for a bit. So mm. once the world opens up a little more, we're a little less, you know, COVID, yeah. dealing with COVID, um, the goal, you know, would be to, you know, a year or two in another country. Any target yeah. countries? Like, I mean, Japan would be great because you don't oh, love yes. anime. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah singapore you know honestly i like i i really do love asia so i'd be cool with that or central south america would be awesome too i'm really just open okay I, yeah because yeah, yeah. australia is closer to asia than we are right now so it is it is you know i could do some weekend trips to bali right? <laughs> that wouldn't be bad that wouldn't be it bad wouldn't be. it Did wouldn't you imagine? be <laughs> Going back to grade seven and sitting us down at like whatever the table or whatever thing we were doing and telling us that this is what possibly was out there for us if we just worked hard and were kind and stayed positive. I wouldn't believe you. Mainly because I was the kid who's getting suspended weekly in school. So <laughs> I, was, I was, yeah, this is a little side note, Gore's a little bit of a troublemaker. Um, so, I, you know, listen, I, we, we are both troublemakers. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, I can't, there's no judgments from, from me over here. Yeah. Very nice. See, that's why we've always been cool. Um, right. So I definitely probably would not would have believed it, but yeah, I'm are, so happy that it's not their histories, right? People, if you want to, if you are sitting here or even in five years or two years or whatever years, and you're somewhere where you don't want to be, or you're somewhere and you have a goal and you don't know how to get there, take the first step, listen to people who have done things. You don't need to follow exactly what they are, but just know that um, surround yourself by people who inspire you to you know, take those risks for people that want you to succeed by people that say, hey, uh, like I love you and go for it. Um, yeah. I don't know what's more damaging, Gordon. Let me, let me know what you think. Um, is people that say, I don't really think it's for you or, you know, the people out there that don't believe in you, but never, um, I don't know, the roadblocky people, but you didn't have a relationship with them yeah. or the people that are kind of close to you or maybe really close to you and say, well, like, why don't you just try this um, instead? Or the people that yeah. kind of like the well-intentioned people that yeah. don't want to see you hurt. They don't want you to aim too high because you might get hurt those are the worst ones for me right because and you know I tell my sister this all the time because she doesn't let my nephew fail because she's she doesn't want to see him hurt I'm like he's got to hurt you've got to fail yeah. still encourage him because now you can encourage he now because if you don't fail young you're going to fail old but when you fail young you start to learn to develop the mechanics to be resilient Right. And to get back on the horse and how to deal with it mentally, emotionally and physically. When you fail when you're full adult or later right, and you never had those experiences before, you don't know how to deal with it. And it hits you in a way where you, you become messed up. So, for example, when I was let go from Deloitte, I won't lie to you. I sat in my basement and got drunk for three days straight, three days straight. I was inebriated in my basement. On day four, I started applying for 20 jobs a day. Love it. 20. And that was it. And that was my goal. I was like 20 a day. I did that for four days before I just had too many interviews lined up. <laughs> That's crazy. I just, it was just like, I, I just, was I just, her, like, 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 what stops? Like, you ran out of like, yeah. companies to apply for? Oh, no, no, no. You couldn't do no, it with the interview for I, fun. I couldn't. I really couldn't. <laughs> and so before, before I got my, what is it like your settlement not a settlement but like uh my, yeah it's like payout or yeah, yeah my payout i had another job lined up before i got my payout and i was in vegas i remember i was at oh i took my best friend to vegas her and i went to vegas i was sitting in oh when i when i checked i was like oh damn they paid me i had no cares in the world at that point Amazing. and then by two weeks into my of that job PwC offered me a job and I told them, Hey, I just signed a six month contract and they told me we'll wait. Goosebumps. So yeah, I like, you know what I mean? So it is one of those things where it's just like, 
you just like you have to learn how to deal with failure give yourself a grieving time yeah. a day two three but after that get back on that horse and do whatever needs to take so love it yeah. get back on that horse gordon mm-hmm. one final question mm-hmm. and i'm sure. really interested to hear um how you define success cool man mm-hmm. let me let me pause on that for a minute how do i define success I think success really is about enjoying life with those around you that mean something to you, right? Um, I don't think success is money. I don't think it's a position. I don't think it's a title. I, I really think success is finding your own inner happiness and and, and being with it and then like pushing it out into the world, yeah. right? That, that to me is success. It's just, um, so every, everything else can be taken from you. Everything else is just uh, a fleeting moment in an infinite void of moments, right? But like when you're truly happy and grounded within yourself, right? It's all perfect, man. And that is, that is the true level of success to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Would you be interested in doing a part two of this sometime? Let's do it. <laughs> part two. Let's go. Yeah, man. Like, whatever, man. Like, Who knows? Maybe it'll even be in person sometime when, uh, yes. <laughs> when yes. can be done. I just know if, yeah. like, when, when and if I run into you randomly again, and it would be even better if it was somewhere around the world. Like, how awesome would that be yeah. if, like, Perfect. I'm running to you in Singapore and you're like, what's up? And you're like, I'm working here. Like, I'm so like, I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> no, yes, let's do that. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, let's do it right there, right now. So, yeah. <laughs> like, right, I'd love to do a part two. If your students have any other questions or anything they want to know, like, hit me up, like, wherever, LinkedIn, through your podcast, whatever, man. I'm, I'm an open book to talk. Thank so, you. Yeah, I'll put the, yeah. your uh, LinkedIn in uh, the show notes uh, and Keisha will mm-hmm. mention that in, um, in the intro. Um, our, our students, our Dallas students, our universe, like this upcoming generation, um, I don't know about you, but like I, they light me up. Like they make me be like, yes, because the values that are emanating through and the goals that they have are their own and what they're willing to do um, big picture and what they're not willing to do, um, to get them, uh, is really inspiring for me for this up and coming generation. So, uh, that's great to hear. That yeah. awesome and you see hear. that as well, right. With, um, and you will more and more. So like in your, yeah, you know, we actually had a conversation a bit about this the other day at the firm where it's part of it with the new world of working, you this is the, this, they say right now is the hardest time to work because there's four different generations all working at one time, mm. right? And you have the complete old world who's used to butts and chairs, nine to five, nine to nine, whatever, whatever. And now we're going into this new world where a lot of the kids like that are, you know, year students or first years or second years, they're a lot more fluid. They're seeing all these tech rooms where I can work from home. I can work from a mountaintop. I can work from the office. I can do whatever. Right. And balancing those out where we're still, they're like, no, I'm still able to deliver, you know, but I don't need, you just don't need to always see me. How do we manage all that? Right. And then there's also a big push where they're also asking questions on diversity, inclusion, women's rights, LBGTQ, right? What is it? Do you have any debt? Right. And you're like, wow, this is awesome. You guys are not just looking, what's sustainability? You're not just looking for a place to work anymore. You're looking for a place that is willing to work with who you are as a person, which is essentially, it's just more key than, because just as the firm interviews you, remember, you are interviewing the firm or whatever company you're working, you're applying to. You are interviewing them just as much as they are interviewing you. So if it doesn't, and I know it's tough because sometimes you don't got the prospects, but if it doesn't fit with your, your brand, with who you are, step away, right? There will be something. There will, there will. And if you run into a roadblock, 
reach out to Gordon, reach out to me, like help, uh, let yeah. us help, you know, um, provide some insights on that roadblock. Cause we didn't get to, you know, be happy and be challenged in our careers without other people. Like it's all about the people that surround you. So um, we are more than willing and happy to have the conversation and perspective. Thank you. Gordon. Absolutely. I don't Anytime. think I could have asked for a better um, beginning, middle or end to this. Really appreciate you taking right, your time with us. Happy to do it, man. Anytime. Just let me know. I'll be here. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers.